Welcome. In this podcast, we're going to learn some information about the medians of a triangle, um, as well as solve some problems with medians of a triangle. So concurrency of the medians of a triangle. The medians of a triangle intersect at a point that is two-thirds of the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. And that's a lot of information. So I broke it down into all the relationships. And you have this diagram, but you don't have these notes. So I'd like you to write these notes these notes in your notes. And so first of all, relationships are true for all three medians, right? Same relationship. So first of all, and I'm going to get a little handy dandy arrow here so I can point. The only way I know how on, a, on the smart board. Oops. Oh, here goes my arrow. All right, so first of all, right there, Let's talk about the outside of the triangle. Midpoint of vertex equals midpoint of other vertex. And we're referring to in a side of the triangle. And so I'll squeeze that in. In one or any side, really. Nothing special about one side as opposed to the other sides. Um, but we're all referring to um, midpoint of vertex, midpoint of vertex for the same side. So I'll add that for any side. All right, so now let's mark that information on our diagram. All right, so right here, let's put a nice little dot where it says X, and you can put right next to X that it is the midpoint, right? So X is the midpoint there. What does a midpoint do? Right? So midpoint divides your uh, a segment in half, right? So x, we'll put this over here. X divides the side QP in half. It divides it into two congruent segments. All right, so that means that XQ is going to be congruent to XP. And that part's not over in the notes over there. So let's add, write that in. So X, uh, XP, or actually let's call it QX. We'll go from the vertex to the midpoint. All right, so QX is congruent to PX. All right, so there's our... And this is all referring to the midpoint. Likewise, we have the same thing for the other midpoints on each of our sides. Y here is also a midpoint. Right? It divides side QR into two congruent points. All right? So still referring here to statement number one. All right? So uh, Y divides QR into two congruent segments. All right, so that means that these two are congruent. Right? They're not necessarily the same length as um, CQ, or excuse me, Q, uh, QX and PX unless it's an isosceles or equal out triangle, right? but those two segments are congruent to one another because Y is dividing that side, QR, into two congruent segments. Right? So that does mean that um, X or QY is congruent to RY. And then lastly, Z down here at the bottom is also a midpoint. Fix my T there. Good enough. All right, and so Z there divides PR into two congruent segments. All right, so Z, I'm going to put a line there, divides, so you can tell it's a Z and not a, not a 2. Z divides Q, there's a Q, PR, excuse me, my shadow is blocking, divides PR into two congruent segments. Right, and so that's going to mean that P 
PZ is going to be congruent to ZR. Okay, we could squeeze that in. And so if you run out of space, now you can just add like sticky note or an additional page. Or sticky note is nice because you got the diagram here. And well, that moved everybody up a teeny bit, but not a whole heck of a lot. But maybe just enough for PZ can grow into Z to RZ. And yes, indeed, it just fit. All right, so that's some information that number one is giving us. All right, there's also some information that number two written in green is giving us. And uh, handy dandy, it's going to move down. All right, so two midpoints to vertex equals the side of the triangle. All right, so in other words, and I'll, I'll write it on the triangle. All right, so if we had, for instance, and I better stay with green, right, since we're talking about the, the words that are in green. Um, if we look at PX, there's PX, right? For instance, PX, actually, you know what? I'll write over here by QR. All right, so uh, QY, right, so this is referring to number two. QY is equal to half of QR. Right? Since, that's, since y is the midpoint, right? and y is going to divide qr in half, qy is half of qr. And then going the other way, and midpoint, you're going to move over here on this side, so I can write one last thing, right? and that is that if I have two qus, that would equal one qr, right? because QR is twice the length of QY. And that's true for all the different sides. We won't, we'll only write it one time. All right, so now let's take a look at our, let's move on to our centroid. But I did want to touch on the sides, right? Because those X, Y, and Z are midpoints, and they tell us something as well. They give us information. All right, so the midpoint is equal to, is equal, equals one third, excuse me, midpoint to centroid. I'm trying to figure out which way I wrote here. Midpoint to centroid, so this is one thing here, equals one third of the median. All right, let's write that on the triangle, right? And so midpoint to centroid. So right here, I'll circle it in purple here. This is the centroid, right? And actually, that's an important point in a triangle. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, but Q, um, excuse me, X to C, okay? So midpoint to centroid. Maybe we'll write centroid next to it. Okay, so this is the centroid. Midpoint to centroid. This part here is one third of Q, or F, excuse me. Why do I want to keep naming the letters the wrong thing? X, R. <laughs> One third of XR. So XC is one third of XR. Right? And I need another color here. Maybe we'll write in the dotted purple there. All right? So now, if we continue looking down here, vertex to centroid is two thirds the median. All right? So if I come over here, all right? So this part. Kept it the same color, different line. That part there is two thirds. Oops, but you know what? I can't write like that. So we'll get the regular purple out. So this part here is two thirds of XR, right? So then that's always how the centroid is going to divide your side, right? It's going to, uh, not divide, side, um, the median. The centroid is always going to divide the median into two parts, right? And the part that goes from the midpoint to the centroid is going to be one-third the length of the median. And the part that goes from the uh, centroid to the vertex is going to be two-thirds, right? And that's going to be true all the way through, right? So for instance, right here, Right, that's one third 
right? Because that's midpoint to centroid. This would be two thirds. And I'm just going to write one third median. Right? And underneath here, I'll write median as well. So one third XR is one third that median. And two thirds the median. Right? And then this would be here, two thirds of the median. All right? And lastly, we got one more. I'll write it in blue. All right? So midpoint to centroid, that's one third. If I can make a nice looking one third on this reading sideways. Let me write that again. You have to forgive me a little bit. I had a fall, and it's hard for me to hold the microphone. <laughs> so I'm balancing holding the microphone with sort of my arm as opposed to my hand, and writing with the other hand. So um, midpoint to centroid, that's one third the median, and then uh, centroid to vertex, that's going to be two thirds the median. That relationship holds all the time. So if you know that you've got a line extending from a midpoint to a vertex, you know exactly how long each part of that line is, of that median is. All right, so we're going to write in all the relationships here. And we've got them all over that triangle. Hopefully you can read that. Um, so if C is the centroid of triangle PQR, then XR, then blank XR equals, right? We've got blank XR equals and blank XR equals. One of those is going to be a third, and one is going to be two thirds. As a matter of fact, we can write that all the way through, right? Because that's going to be the relationship with our cent with our medians, right? That centroid is dividing into one third and two third, one third and two third and one-third and two-thirds, right? So XR is one median, right? One-third of XR is XC. And two-thirds of uh, XR is RC. I really should have these above it. I should have it above these ones as well, but I can't type them very well. One third of YP, right? So YP go is that median that starts here. It's the one in black, right? Um, one third of YP would be YC, right? So from midpoint to vertex, excuse me, midpoint to centroid, and then two thirds of YP, right? That black median there would be vertex to centroid, right? So that's going to be two thirds, and that's PC. Right? And then lastly, uh, one third of ZQ. Right? So ZQ is the median in blue. Maybe I should have color coded my words here. Right? So one third of ZQ is, so that would go from Z to C, the centroid. Right? So that's ZC. And then two thirds of ZQ. Right, we go from the centroid to the vertex of ZQ. So that one's going to be um, QC. Right. So just to make sure you got which one is which. Right. So the purple one was the first one. I'm going to just erase this and write the same thing, but I'm just going to color code it real quick. Right. So the black one are these ones. One third YP is, and I lost YP, there it is, uh, YC. That's the black median on my paper, and, or on, on the screen here. And two thirds of YP is PC. And then the other one here was the blue one. All right, so one third ZQ is ZC, and two thirds ZQ is QC. All right, so hopefully that helps out if I color code those for you so you can see which one is which. 
right? So I'm going to stop this podcast. We spent a lot of time on this, and that is so that we can just talk about the relationships. Next uh, podcast just coming up, we're going to solve them. And once we know what the relationships are, you'll see how fast the solving goes. All right, bye for now.